Hey everyone, S Dub Nation here, and welcome back to a brand new Ninjago video here on the channel. Today, I would like to stop and take the time to rank all six of the Wild Brain Animation Studios Ninjago seasons. Please note that everything that I will say in this video is just my very own opinion. My list is certainly not the right list; it is just my list, and you are free to comment down below your list. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please don't forget to check out that Twitter. Without further ado, let's move right into our ranking. Kicking off my list at number six for me has got to go to season 14, The Island. Now, the four season structure could work just like how it did with March of the Oni, whereas that season actually worked better as a TV movie, this season actually kind of works as a TV special. It's like a side story that's actually contributing a little bit to the main story of season 15. And I really did like that aspect going into season 15, seeing the characters that we previously saw inside of season 14 and how the stories kind of connect. I liked it a little bit more than I did on my last Ninjago ranking, but thanks to a waste of great concepts, horrible villain idea and just too short to do anything great i just thought of this season to be the worst of the wild brain seasons and still the worst of the ninjago seasons kicking off my top five list for me has got to go to season 11 secrets of the forbidden spinjitsu the fire chapter i love the vibrant animation like i always say the bright colors of orange and red all of that works for me because it kind of catches my attention a lot more than the ice chapter per se this is the first time that we're seeing this wild brain animation and i still love the fact that it's so vibrant the action is great and i think it works better than the action in previous ninjago seasons minus season 8 through 10 and also season 14 has the same positive that it has great action throughout but the villain sucks and i do not like her motives at all it feels like a very short story with many side stories that do not contribute to the main story as much but i I really do like the fact that they treat Wu like an actual human this time. And the Forbidden Spinjitsu itself, I love the concept. Coming in at number 4 for me has got to go to Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitsu Season 11, The Ice Chapter. The Ice Chapter is figuratively and literally better than the Fire Chapter. But whereas the Fire Chapter has the one up is that the Ice Chapter gets a little bit boring at times. The side stories do contribute to the main stories a lot here. But a lot of the location is just kind of bland a little bit mainly because of the coloring i do not like the coloring a lot inside of this chapter of season 11 but i do love the fact that we're inside of a new location we're seeing new parts of ninjago and we're expanding the world a lot here and i love the idea of the ice emperor but it was not handled the best in execution with it being zane because it was predictable but i love akita and the foundlings i thought all of that was pretty great and kai getting his powers back was awesome to me real quick before i get into my top three list i like to take the time to say that if you are a big fan of ninjago which you probably are that's why you're watching this video click that playlist up above for everything ninjago related that i have on this channel also if you are a big fan of marvel and dc please don't forget to check out the regular podcast that link is always in the description like comment and subscribe guys without further ado let's move right into our top three Kick it off my top three list for me has got to go to season 12, Prime Empire. The concept of Jay getting lost inside of a video game and the team themselves getting lost in a video game and they only have three lives and if they die in the game, they die in real life. That's awesome to me. Like, that is great. Like, that's such a great, interesting new way to take Ninjago. And I love the world of Prime Empire. I love the avatars. I love the different characters that come into the mix. I love the races, the vibrancy of the colors with the neons and stuff like that. I think all of that was pretty great. And I love the fact that we're actually focusing more on Jay and Nia's relationship since we haven't done that really since season six. I love these new characters like Okino and Unagami. And I thought all of them played nicely into the story that they were trying to execute. And going back to Unagami, I love him as a villain. But this season does get a little bit forgettable inside of the middle because of the episodes that do definitely contribute to the main story a lot. They're just not interesting. My runner-up at number two for me has got to go to season 13, Master of the Mountain. Now, for the longest, this has been my favorite season of the Wild Brain seasons, but I got to say, it still holds up. The only reason why it's at number two is because I think my number one is way better, but I do think that Master of the Mountain was a great season for Cole. It is so satisfying seeing a great top 10 season for Cole, in my opinion, and I think all of it worked perfectly well, while actually focusing more on the relationship and the dynamic of Cole's mother and also his elemental power. Powers. I love the Spinjitsu Burst idea. I thought all of that was pretty great. Everything going on with the Vinstone arc, I can't wait to see how that is more a 
explored inside of the future. And we're actually expanding the world a little bit more here by introducing characters like Lily, Cole's mother, and introducing her death and introducing characters that surrounded her in her time living. And I think all of that works pretty well. We still have some vibrancy in the colors there, but some of it is kind of bland because we get the bland green or blue and then sometimes we get the vibrancy of the orange mixed in there. But other than that, I really didn't have any big problems with the season except for the fact that I wish the Skull Sorcerer was Cole's mother. I thought it would be very great if Cole had to fight his mother in the end. All in all, this was a great season. But coming in at my number one has got to go to the newest Wild Brain season, season 15, Seabound. I love this season from the start of the first episode. Focusing more on Nia and her relationship with the elemental powers, expanding the mythology in the world of Ninjago, saying that the first Minjitsu Master couldn't command wind or water, so it kind of covers up the plot holes of Season 4. I thought all of that was pretty great, and like I said, it expands the mythology a lot. We have great new locations, we have great new characters, we have a very terrifying and intimidating villain inside of Kalmar. I thought all of that worked together while also focusing more on Nia's character arc and her relationship with her powers and her mother. As someone who does not like Nia as much, I gotta say this season made me like Nia a lot. And although her sacrifice was not as as heroic or emotional as Zane's sacrifice was for me I gotta say she definitely took over the spotlight it was well deserved it was well earned and I loved it all right guys that is it for the ranking please note that everything that I did say in this video was just my very own opinion my list was certainly not the right list it was just my list and you are free to comment down below your ranking of all six wild brain animation studios ninjago seasons like comment and subscribe guys please don't forget to check out that twitter that's gonna pop up on the screen right now with that being said I will see you all next time peace Thank <laughs> you.